All right, everybody. I want to welcome on Izzy Ralston. Is that the correct pronunciation? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so I want to welcome him on. He was uh, my goalie at Bernathan two years ago. We met both in our freshman year. And uh, I wanted to bring him on just because um, we're both headed to a new school, Riviera University. And we haven't been able to do a podcast yet. We've been kind of waiting it out. But I figured now is uh, as good as any time to bring him on and introduce him to the to the group. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. What's up, guys? I uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you, Corson. Look forward to this episode. For sure. Yeah. So, um, I guess first of all, like, what was uh, what was kind of your introduction to hockey in general? Just to get right into it, I know you. We have lots of stuff to talk about in terms of your overall career and things you've learned, but like, take us back to the start when you first started growing up and what kind of brought you into hockey. So um, my, I guess like my dad was a, a big fan of hockey or just like a fan growing up when he was a kid, but never got to play it. But um, basically when I was like two, two and a half, three, like I got my first pair of skates and um, we went to like the local rink near my house, which is surprisingly being from California, it was only like five minutes away. And I remember him uh, pushing me on a chair and just like me just feeling it. And he told me that I actually like hated the ice and uh, I like didn't want to be out there at all. And uh, I thought that was a pretty funny story, but um, I guess that was like my first introduction on the ice hockey rink. And then when I was four years old, I started playing a uh, player for inline hockey, which is roller hockey. And uh I just did that um, mostly growing up as a kid, and that was um, how I got introduced. So I had to give it up to my dad since he never played it, but showed me the sport, and uh, I fell in love with it at an early age. That's awesome. Well, and what was it that kind of had you transition into goalie? I know it's it's such a weird thing because when I was younger, that was kind of like the first position that I like really pushed towards. I like played out for a little while, and then. I kind of used to bug my parents and be like, I want to play goalie. My dad was a goalie and he's like, don't do it. Yeah. It's, it's too tough. Don't, don't get into it. Like, what was it that drew you to being a goalie? Uh, actually, like, it's pretty surprising because I was playing out as a forward and I was actually pretty good. Like I was a goal scorer. Like I would score multiple a game. Like, and uh, there was this one um, tournament that I had to play goalie for, for a roller. And I think I like, out of like the four games, I think I had three shutouts in them and it was my first time ever playing goalie. And uh, I was probably, I don't even know, like eight years old at the time. And um, there was like an ice hockey coach, I guess, watching it, who was a former professional hockey player. Uh, his name is Chris Kennedy. And he saw me play at the inline rink when I had those shutouts. And um, he asked if I would uh, like to play on his travel team for the upcoming year for ice hockey. And my dad had to tell him that I've never played ice hockey before. Like I skated when I was a kid on the ice, but roller hockey was the only thing I knew. And I'd even play goalie in roller hockey. It was mostly uh, all forward pretty much. So um, that's ended up how I made the transition. And I went into that first year of uh, the travel hockey and it was with like kids that were two years older than me. So I was not only playing a, like a year higher, but in my first year of uh, ice hockey, like I'm playing goalie and it's just completely foreign to me. And I didn't have, have a very good year and they ended up switching uh, me out to a player during the middle of the year. That's how bad I was. And then uh, I started uh, the next year, the following year after that, I, I, um, <clears throat> went down to mites and went to my real level and started playing goalie from there and I went to in-house for house league and um, started playing there and did pretty well there and got asked to play travel again as a goalie so that's how it all started <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny how like things can transition so quickly and like you go through those weird like I don't know you, you think you'd think like you must have just started playing and then you just stuck with goalie the whole time, but it's kind yeah. of funny. You just wavered around. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I still play forward uh, for roller hockey when I go back home to California in the off season, and I still do a pretty good job. So, I mean, sometimes I do think like, what would ever happen if I stuck with forward? But you know, goalie is a very unique position. I'm happy that I was able to do it throughout juniors, and obviously, um, still with college right now. That's awesome. Yeah. So. And what, what was your kind of like minor hockey experience? I know you said like with mites and making that transition up into like playing more competitive hockey, but like where, where did you play growing up and what was that whole experience like? So uh, that very first team, um, my very first year when I played goalie, um, that was for the Artesia Avalanche and they're not even uh, a club anymore, but after that year, I went back to uh, in-house at where the Anaheim Ducks practice facility was and ended up transitioning the next year to play for the Junior Ducks, which is the travel team in that same um, building. So I transferred over there and I played for the Junior Ducks for, I don't know, a couple of years, three, four years at least. And then, um, and then my Wee. I moved over my second year of Pee Wee to another club called the uh, Anaheim Wildcats. And <clears throat> I was there for just a year and then went back to the same um, place, Artesia, but they're called the California Wave uh, now. So I went back to where it all started, me playing travel hockey in the same building. Um, and I played for the California Wave for two seasons before I uh, moved out to Boston when I was 16 years old to play U- U18s out here. Nice. Yeah. So I, that's something I've always wondered. Is that like pretty common for most, like most American kids to like transition a lot and like go to a lot of different places to play? Or is it usually do players stick to one place and kind of play out most of their minor there? Uh, well, depending like um, in California, at the time when I was growing up, there was like always like seven or eight teams that would be in our league that you could try out for at the different levels with whatever it was with, if it was triple A or double A or single A. But um, for me, like I had, I moved clubs because I wasn't always um, gonna make the top team or the top club. So I had to go kind of where I was wanted and uh, I remember all those tryouts, like, it was like, I never knew if I was on the team or not, like I was trying out for for a spot. And it was usually like, the weekend of tryouts is when I found out I was on the team or not. So like, I'd never had really a set spot when I was growing up. So um, like, the reason I would transfer or transition over to other clubs was to get an opportunity at the highest level. Got it. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah, there's one of those weird things where like Canada has a lot of restrictions. Well, especially in Ontario where I, I wanted to switch teams a bunch of times. And like, I, I even made a team. I played in Brantford. I made a team in Cambridge, which was like 30 minutes away. And like I made the team and then I found out I wasn't allowed to play there and I had to go yeah. back. So yeah, like our restrictions are really weird. So it kind of, it kind of forces you into like, you can't really leave your organization unless you like physically move somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like you're, if you wanted to, if I wanted to play for a different team, better team, more opportunity, it's like, Hey, Hey parents, we're, we're going to move to wherever I'm going to play. <laughs> oh yeah. See in California, it was nothing like that because there's like kids even making the four hour drive from Vegas to go into their practices and games to play on these like California AAA teams. So like there's kids moving from all over. Um, right. And especially when you get to the U16 level, the junior ducks and junior Kings are a uh, top triple a program. So you got kids from even Europe coming to play U16 for those teams. So there's definitely no restrictions on that. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> it's such, I, I personally sometimes think that's such a tough thing for players, especially in Canada where like, if you're not really happy in an organization, you're kind of just, you just have to suck it up. And like, sometimes you just play for like the double A team, even if you could play yeah. for play, which is like, 
I don't know. It's kind of tough. Like I'm kind of jealous of that, having that freedom that you guys have in the U S <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a little different now. Yeah. Um, just because it went from when I was playing, uh, seven triple a teams in California to only three now. And the reason I know that is because my brother is, uh, playing, uh, well, he played Bantam this year, but he's moving up to, um, midgets, which is U 16 this following year. So, I guess they cut down all the AAA teams, so uh, the talent is better on those three teams. Right. Yeah, that makes so a lot of sense. It's definitely a little different now. Right. Huh. Interesting. Well, to transition and talk about stuff outside of minor hockey, like what was what was junior like? You said you moved away to Boston at 16. Like what level was that, and I guess what was that like? So um, when I moved out, it was my junior year. I just finished my junior year of high school and I was going into my senior year. So that's grade 12 for all the Canadians out there. Um, <laughs> um, well, I was moving uh, and I just like got this offer for a U18 team, U18 team out here called the Islanders Hockey Club. And, um, you know, it was just in a really good uh, USPHL, like 18 division. And um, I kind of always like, wanted to move away because I I knew like California like to have the greatest exposure and um, me wanting to like play junior hockey I knew that's like what I wanted to do and um, moving to Boston I guess was like a big step for me and um, I ended up making that decision and within the first month like I, I remember not not liking my decision I was like damn I wish I just like could have tried out. I played for the junior ducks because they were doing really well that year in that same level. And um, because I wasn't starting like I thought I was. And then after that first month, I kind of turned things around and I pretty much started every game after that. And uh, it was just a big, um, a, a big move for my hockey career. And I'm glad I made it. And I also during that time wanted to do homeschool throughout the year, but I was like, told by my parents and even the billet parents I was staying with that I should go to the local school there. And that was probably the greatest decision I could ever make because I still have friends to this day that I are like some of my best friends, like, um, and that, that was a, the best decision I could have made. And it still feels like home in this area. So, um, that was a, that was a great experience. And, um, I went back after that first year, I went back and did a second year of U18 um, at the same place. And I put up good numbers both years and got a chance to um, play in the NA. And unfortunately I was cut right before the sh showcase. I stayed out in Johnstown, Pennsylvania for about a month and did training camp and preseason and uh, a few days before the opening games in Blaine, I was uh, cut, which really sucked. And um, that was kind of my first taste on how ruthless juniors could be. And, um, you know, a couple of weeks later, I found myself on my way up north, uh, going to Manitoba, being a California boy. That was definitely a huge culture shock. Um, I was going to play in the MJHL for the Dauphin Kings. And... Um, that was a pretty, pretty quick uh, visit there as well as I only got to stay there for probably a month or a month and a half. And, you know, I got there um, when their season already started and they were already kind of like in a losing streak in the slump. And I came in there hoping to be like the answer and they were, they had uh, big hopes for me. And I mean, it's not that I, I failed. I just, couldn't get the wins that I wanted. And um, I ended up being traded um, in, to the SIJHL um, to Fort Francis Lakers in Ontario. So um, <laughs> that, that sucks because I had to take a Greyhound for like seven hours all the way to um, Ontario to get picked up there by the assistant coach and driven back and it's already my third team of the year. And I'm just thinking like, what am I getting myself into? Like, I'm just so, so confused. And obviously like that being my third team, I was very unconfident at that time, but 
Um, you know, I battled through it. I played a lot of games when I was in Fort Francis to, you know, kind of make the best of a shitty situation. And the next year, like I set a goal to be playing like a, in a high level, which was the NCDC. And um, fortunately, I was able to make the jump and um, come back to the same actual organization I played U18 at, but at the highest level, which is the NCDC. So uh, that was my goal after that uh, kind of bad first season of juniors. And I was glad to be able to come to like my second home and um, play there and end my junior career there. Awesome. Yeah. So I guess the touch back on that, having to deal with all the different teams and that year where I would imagine that would be probably put a lot of players on the edge of saying like, I don't really want to play anymore, honestly, because it can be, it can, it can take away a lot of the fun when you realize that sometimes teams don't really care about you as a person. They're more focused on like whatever the team, what's ever best for the team is going to come yeah. first, second and third kind of thing. <laughs> well, that's the one thing that I hated about juniors is just having like no security whatsoever. Like, you don't know if you're walking in the rink um, the next day and going to be traded, especially like when I was in Dauphin, just just being on like a losing team and just me going in there and not being able to like solve the problem and just not knowing if I'm going to be traded. And then next thing you know, I get to call the coach's office and it's me going to another team. So that definitely sucked. And um that's also why I wanted to make the decision to come back um, to the Islanders because I knew the coach there and um, kind of felt like a family there. So I knew I wasn't going to be bounced around in my last year. And that was like the biggest thing is I was kind of done being a suitcase. Like I just wanted to stay at one place. Right. Got it. Okay. Well, what did you, what did you find that you learned from that kind of really tough experience? Because I mean, again, like, that is, it's brutal. And what's crazy about it is like your story is not unique. Like so many players have these like just wild kind of like suitcase experiences in junior. And it's weird because I think a lot of the time it gets like super glorified and like everybody wants to talk about, Oh, look at the, the hometown star player. But like, yeah. I feel like, I feel like a lot of guys that are in between who are like strong players, but don't get a lot of respect kind of it, it's weird but nobody really talks about how like tough it is yeah I mean it was definitely um like I think the biggest thing for me was the culture shock of just living in Canada like being a California boy like just the different like just how people live differently out there like it was just completely different and then you know kind of being thrown into the the net and you know trying to stop pucks and just me not being 100 percent comfortable in my surroundings it just kind of affected my play but um in the end I think it made me like a better person and it showed me a lot like about myself because I just remember taking that greyhound after being traded and I think like that's where I took it all in is like I need to bear down like I need to start like making these saves like and um, I know I kind of like found something in me to like just keep pushing and not instead of like I was already down at that point like I feel like I'm literally just down and down in the dirt but um, I kept you know pushing and kept the dream alive and kept grinding and finally made it out of the trenches so <laughs> but that was like a big thing for me it was um just not, uh, I guess, getting the recognition that I thought I like should be getting like for the amount of work I put in. Um, and that was like the most frustrating part, but I mean, you just got to stick, stick to the process and, you know, things will, things will come out good if you keep your head up high. So, yeah, I think that's a big thing that a lot of players really can learn from is that like understanding when you start to when you run into a lot of the adversity and you run into a lot of the 
situations that don't go the way you expected or you don't get what you think you deserve is it's, it's understanding that sometimes that's just the way the, the, the way that junior hockey works. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe just having the preparation and knowing that things are going to be difficult sometimes and things aren't certain and it's learning to become very accepting of that uncertainty is a, can take a lot of the stress off. I think players often have their best years when they just stop worrying about what's going to happen and just focus on like, Oh, well, I'm just going to play, see what happens. And if I get traded, then I'll go. Then I'll go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think um, a lot of players make the mistake that every junior career is going to be like um, just perfect, just lined up perfectly. You know, you're going to play in the NA and then you're going to go to the U show and then you're going to get your D1 commit or in Canada, like you're going to play U16 and then move up to tier two the next year and then, or go major junior right away. Like, you know, people people think it's just, like, going to be that easy road and it's all just going to fall into place. But, no, there's, like, a lot of, you know, things that come in the way that, you know, you need to, you know, push through and get over that hump and, you know, go through adversity. Like, there's, there's going to be ups and downs in the career. It's not just going to be picture perfect. Yeah, you couldn't have said it better. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously that was a lot of the – tough parts and maybe the negative parts of junior but what would you say your favorite part was definitely just living with my like I would always live with someone on my team and um every room I I had I pretty much was close to like really close to and um just having those bond with the boys and you know seeing everyone every day and you know just getting unlimited ice time almost all the time just your, your job is hockey and you just feel like a, a pro hockey player at such a young age. And, you know, that's kind of what, I mean, that's still what I'm starting to be is um, playing professional hockey. So just being at a younger age at 16 to 20 years old and being able to live that lifestyle was just amazing. And um, I couldn't have asked to do it with a, you know, better group of guys like every, every team I was on, like, no matter how long or short, like, I took something from it, and um, it was just, I think that was the biggest thing, is the connections you make throughout it. All right. And what, what was it like being a goalie in juniors? I know you've kind of spoken the whole time as from the goalie's perspective, but, like, what did you, what do you think is different about being a goalie, kind of going through all that stuff, as opposed to, I obviously have the player perspective, but what was it like for you? Um, so basically I, when you win, you're on top of the world. Like you could do nothing wrong. Like you could do anything you want, but when you lose, you feel like you're the only guy in the room. And, you know, sometimes like it singles out on you and you, you feel that uh, pressure, but, you know, being, being a goalie is definitely way different um, than any other position. And obviously I'm a little biased being a goalie, but, um, you know, one of my favorite part about being a goalie is the pressure that comes with it and basically having the game lie right in my hand. Like if I'm, if I play bad, then, you know, it's going to be tough for the boys to pull out two points that night. But, you know, if I play how I should, I mean, it should be like playing, uh, big booty mix in the locker room after a big win so I I think um I think like playing goalie and juniors was tough but at the same time it was like very re rewarding and I, I won't forget like you know winning those games and um you know celebrating with the guys in the locker room after and um you know just I think uh everyone everyone is equal on the team and everything, but, you know, especially like when you guys go on a winning streak, like the goalie is always the one getting all the love from the boys. And that's a great feeling. Yeah, I definitely would agree with that for sure. <laughs> um, in terms of like pressure and dealing with that, are there any kind of like core mindset, like core views, perspectives, techniques that you use to try to kind of manage like stress, pressure, all that stuff? So, yeah, I definitely 
like I feel it. I feel pressure, you know. I mean, I'm nervous um, before the games and um, like I'm, I'm human, so I can't say I, I don't feel that. But, um, you know, I manage it, I guess, in game with my breathing. I just try to stay calm. And I you know that's my biggest thing is if I'm calm, like cool, collected, like I know I'm going to be fine. Like the 90 percent of the game is all in my head and, you know, the other 10 percent is going to come. And I, I, I mean, the way I prepare for games, I guess, is just being confident in practice. Like, say, at practice, like, I'm seeing pucks and I'm making those saves. And I know, especially, like, with the college schedule on those weekends, like, I'm going to be seeing pucks and I'm going to be I'm gonna be ready. So I just got to prepare my body and make sure it's, it's ready to go. But once the game comes, like, I try not to think and I just see the play and I just I just react to it. And, um I guess like for me growing up, I remember when my I was younger, my uh, dad would always tell me to like focus because I guess he could tell that I'd lose focus sometimes and then, you know, I let in a goal. And I think for me growing up, that was like the hardest thing to learn was to focus for the full 60 minutes. But now growing older, obviously that's way easier for me to do. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm just, I'm trying not to think about anything else other than the game and reacting to it and um, not getting too high and not getting too low during the games because um, there's going to be adversity in every single game too. Um, maybe not every game, but most games, and you're going to have to battle through that like you have to do with anything else. Yeah, and I, I definitely can see what you mean by the – the highs and lows. I think that happens with players a lot too, where if you're playing really well or you make like a good play, it's very easy to get like super excited and be like, all right, today's a good game. Like maybe first yeah. you have a great shift. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's those games where like you just, it's like a coin flip, Like you don't know how great your first shift's going to be or your early first period. But a lot of players will just kind of like write off their entire game and like kind of like dip down into the lowest of lows the second something doesn't go right um, yeah and I think that happens with um slumps as well so it's like learning how to deal with those things is so big it was like was there anything that you ever like told yourself like internal talk or anything like that when like uh, you found yourself going through highs or going through lows yeah so like when when I make a like say a big save or like a, a you know like a timely game-changing save it's like I get really like excited. Like I never show it. Like I never, like I, I try not to like show off, especially in games. So I'll never show, it, even if it's like the biggest save I've ever made, like I'll never show it. But like inside, like I'm like going, like my heart's going and I'm like pumped up. I'm super excited. And I basically need to like tell myself like, Hey, you know, settle down, like take a breath, get ready for the next puck that's coming my way. And, um, with the lows is definitely the hardest part. Like say like you're not playing, like I'm not having a bad game, but you know, like I, I need to make that save and uh, you know, it's like piling up the goals are the goals are coming and it's just like, we're still like the team's still in the game and I need to make sure like I'm making those saves. And um, I guess for me, like is when I'm my A game's not playing, like I need to make sure that, my B game is like able to make the big saves too. And um, just keep, keep the teams in the game. What I, like, that's uh, the biggest thing for me um, is just making sure the lows, like they can't pile on and they don't just keep scoring and, um, you know, just work through it. Right. Got it. Okay. And in terms of let's switch over a little bit to college and after juniors, like, what obviously we had a very weird year last year and a very awkward yeah. situation but in our obviously like the freshman season like what was it like for you making that transition what was it like stepping into that league and like how did you feel about kind of what it, what went on kind of thing well to be honest like college is a very different game um college is way more structured and where, whereas juniors is very individual and you got a lot of like, you got the top line players that are 
like really good. And then you got like the depth that isn't that good, but everyone's kind of like trying to do their own thing. Like, yeah, they're playing as a team, but not like, not really, but in college, like it's all about playing like as a team. And, um, you know, that was the biggest thing that I at least like saw from juniors and um, are coming from juniors to college. And also like, you know, you're getting older and the, I think taking care of your body um, comes more with college too. Like I, I remember after those practices at 6 a.m. every morning and um, just feeling like, like how am I going to be uh, ready to go for tomorrow and everything. And like in juniors, like not everyone's the best with like treating their bodies like as a pro and um, in college, I feel like it was like a little different. Like I obviously like wasn't like the best about it, but like I had to keep in mind, like, Hey, I have to be ready to go. Like, this is like a full-time job and um, with academics and with sports, it's like a, at least a 40, 50 hour week. So, um, you know, sleep was important too. And um, I guess that was like the big difference with juniors and in colleges, like not only do you have hockey to worry about and, be at your best but you need to worry about academics as well and be sure that you're on point in the classroom so you could play on weekends right yeah it is a it's definitely one of those things where it's just like an extra layer of kind of being a part of the college and being a part of everything is when you have that school stuff it's you're either working on the school stuff you're trying to get to the rink or you're like trying to spend time with your teammates is kind of like yeah. the constant cycle of trying to find, maximize those three things all the time. Yeah. 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 I know. I'm super excited to get back into it next year. At Riv. <laughs> Definitely. Well, and yeah, that actually is a perfect transition. I wanted to, I guess, just talk about like what your excitement level is and what you're feeling and what kind of motivated you to want to go to Riv in the first place. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, pumped I uh I remember when I committed like two months ago like I was ready for the season to start right away but um yeah I just every day I wake up I'm counting down the days till we could get on the ice and or just even get on campus with all the boys um but for me like what sold me to Riv was um just I guess the the vision and the future of this like hockey team, like that our head coach uh, Sorensen, you know, I kind of saw through his eyes, just um, talking with him and then um, meeting him at the visit and just seeing how passionate he is about um, this up and coming program. And, um, you know, it got me really excited to be a part of the first team and be able to build something and uh, build our own history and, and destiny um, in that program. And I think that's something like really special and um, something that not a lot of people get the opportunity to do um, since most people would rather go to a school that already has a, a name or already has like a for sure, like our like big name hockey team that is gonna be good and they already know what it's gonna be like. But, you know, um, that's kind of what sold me to Riv was that we will be the people that are um, making this culture and it's going to be ours. So I'm really excited about it. And I feel like the kids we have coming in are going to be the right team to um, make a splash right away. So, Yeah, I definitely agree with that as pretty, well, pretty much the same view as me is like, I kind of saw this as one of those rare opportunities where you have a, a coach who has experience you have somebody who is really excited you have a school that's really fully backing the team and investing right away and not kind of not kind of messing around and uh yeah I mean it creates a perfect opportunity for us to to make an impact right away I think all the tools are kind of in place now it's just a matter of showing up and kind of working together with everybody to build that culture so yeah yeah I think it'd be really cool Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Sweet. Okay. And as far as just general training development, again, to switch things up, like 
what are some general training tools that you use on a typical basis? So like, I want to get a little bit into, as we close out, just understanding like what it is that you do that um, might be unique compared to maybe other goalies or other players to give guys a little bit of a perspective of like what else they can be doing with their training and with their preparation. Um, so, I mean, this may not be unique for goalies, but um, I don't know if like a lot of skaters do this, but I mean, I've just recently been getting really into um, yoga and like, that's been huge for me. And um, you know, my biggest thing I've been focusing on since we kind of got the year off and with limited ice, like I've been trying to, you know, get, um, or just try to work on injury prevention. Like that's like the, my main focus right now until I, until June, until I get on the ice four times a week. Um, so right, like lately that's what I've been doing is like yoga and stretching a lot. And um, I started taking classes probably last year and I, I did classes for, a couple months and then I started being able to run my own sessions by myself um and it's just been super helpful for me and um it also like helps me with my breathing as well because you need to be focused on your breathing during yoga and um you know taking your day to focus on your breathing and stuff like can really make you have like a clear mind and honestly like it just like has helped me like just in everyday life, not only with hockey, just have, be happy and, um, you know, stay active and, you know, have a clear mind. And that's like a, a huge thing I've been doing is yoga. And then obviously with injury prevention, I've been um, stretching a, a lot and trying to work on my flexibility as much as possible. So because I took this this year off, there's no hockey for me that next year when I go in and we're on the ice every single day, um, I'm not going to be worried about, you know, pulling a groin or doing something and that's going to prevent me from playing even longer. So um, that's, that's the biggest thing I've been focusing on, but I've also started doing um, eye, like eye training. Like I, I have, um, these blue and white glasses and I have a little program on my computer that I use and uh, I literally just it just works on my eyes and you know I'll find myself literally 30 minutes into eye training like crying because my eyes are getting that much of a workout like I'm literally crying so um, that's definitely been helping and I could tell just by driving like I see a lot more like I can see a lot more on the corner of my eyes too so that's been uh, really helpful too and I can't wait to see what it will do next season. That's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, is that, that a specific program? Like, do you know the name of it? Cause I think that might be something people have some interest in. Um, yeah, I'll have to get the, the program. I just honestly just log into it. Okay. I'll throw it in at the, the end of the video when I find it. Yeah, for sure. Well, we can also just add it into the notes as well. So, okay. but yeah, no, that's great. Okay, cool. And is there something that you feel like you want to be learning more about? Like, is there something you want to be digging into more that you're currently not or that you see as kind of like a future route that you want to head down in terms of development? Um, something that I'm interested in, like getting into and learning more of is like, a, as a workout is uh, Pilates. Like, I've been wanting to like, really get into that um it goes back to the injury prevention thing is just like you know gaining more muscle and like um vulnerable positions like uh, i mean that's like what i'd be focusing on when i go to pilates is just you know just being in those like weird positions that goalies end up you know being in and you know like being able to like um use like muscles i didn't even know i had and, uh, you know, that's something that I've really been um, interested in getting into over this summer. And hopefully I find a place that will suit me perfectly. But um, I guess as another one that I'm looking 
to get into um, in a skill. It's not even hockey related, but um, it's good for cardio. Is uh, I'm looking to get into you know some boxing classes, mostly just to keep up the cardio and uh, you know like just work on work on that. And I I think that would be that would be a good uh, asset to have just being able to go go uh, uh, you know unlimited rounds. <laughs> Good to have that skill as well, just knowing that you can defend yourself in any kind of situation as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, got it. All right, well, as we kind of close out, I have two kind of core questions I want to ask to really just capture what it is about kind of what you love about hockey. So the first one is, why do you play hockey? Like, what is the reason? What drives you to want to keep playing? What, what keeps you continuing to do it? Um, I mean, like I said about the junior hockey is like a lot of it has to do with like the connections that I make and like the people I meet, like that, like definitely dri- like drives me to, you know, wake up and go to the rink every morning is to, you know, see the, the people that I'm on the team with that feel like brothers to me. And, um, you know, that's a huge part, but for me is like, uh, I always just like when someone asks me like what I do or who I am, like it's, it's always funny. Cause I always think like I'm a hockey player. Like that's what I am. And it's just like been like my answer, um, you know, for the past, you know, 20 years or so. So, um, but, you know, just being in that environment, like in that team environment and, um, I think that's like the biggest like part for me is just like having that connection, like that team feeling with the guys and, you know, going to like war with them every night and trying to get those two points. And, um, and that feeling of winning is just like, just so uh, addicting. And like, I just, it's the best feeling in the world. And um, I just, I always want to keep, keep doing that. And, um, I'm trying to become the best goalie and best teammate that I can be. And um, hopefully this, these next two years, I can make a transition and be like a leader on the team and, um, you know, be uh, someone that the boys can look up to. And that's something that definitely um, drives me to keep being a hockey player. That's awesome. And to close it out, what advice would you give to younger players that, um, maybe you wished you had things that you that just come to mind as important things to remember as players. So um, what I'd give to the younger players is to, you know, stick to the process, stay true to yourself and dominate the level that you're at before you look at moving up. Like make sure you're like, dominating and comfortable at the level you're at before you try to make that jump to a higher level because yes it might look good on your elite prospects that you're playing whatever tier two tier one but if you're not playing and not producing and you know not getting the ice time you want then what good is that going to do for you so um you know slow down you know dominate at the level you can and just also, the, the biggest thing is make sure that, you know, when juniors is over, that you have no regrets and that you did everything you can to achieve your dream. And I think that's like the biggest thing is make sure that you're waking up with no regrets. That's awesome. Well, thanks a lot for coming on, Izzy. I'm sure everybody will appreciate all the stuff that you offered as advice and different things you've learned and where you're headed. So, uh, Thanks a lot. Yeah, man. Well, thank you for having me on. I uh, look forward to, you know, seeing you in person and uh, building this program at Riv. Can't wait.